The following is a Fox 54 Plus special presentation. We cannot confirm if any portion has been edited, but we do warn you the video is graphic and may be disturbing. Here's the first video captured by neighborhood surveillance. An officer yells. It's immediately followed by several shots. The video does not show who fired the shots. After the shots are fired, police can be heard shouting. More police voices are heard after this. In the second video, which has no audio, we can see that Perkins has something in his hand, but the video does not show what it is. A later portion of this video, which we are not airing, shows Perkins being shot. Family spokesperson Dr. Bretton Lipscomb had this to say about Perkins. He was a community and family oriented man. Um, and um, to this day, I wholeheartedly believe that Steve White um, was not deserving of the way he was unalive. Police body cam footage would add context to the neighborhood surveillance footage. Here's what Decatur Police Chief Todd Pinion explained about the body cam footage not being released. Legislation enacted earlier this year governs the release of body camera footage. Pursuant to that legislation, the custodial law enforcement agency is the entity to decide when, how, and what to disclose. This morning, community members gathered at Rhodes Ferry Park Indicator and walked from Rhodes Ferry to the Doubletree Hotel upon Governor Kay Ivey's legislative update. And we're here t t today to express, uh, uh, put a physical pres presence on justice, all right? Uh, we're having a, a visitor to coming to the city today, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the governor, and we wanted to let the governor, make the governor aware of what's happening in Decatur, Alabama. Governor Ivey was asked her thoughts on the matter. That case is being investigated by Leah, and until they finish their investigation, there's not a whole lot to say. But the family, understandably, was laser focused on, on one thing, and that's answers to why Steve lost his life. And at this time, I do not have the answers. The investigation into this tragedy is being handled externally by the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency. That's Aaliyah. And uh, I and the city of Decatur are deeply committed to the release of information as soon as it is released by the appropriate agencies in compliance with applicable laws. There were hundreds of people tonight here at this vigil, but they were just chanting no justice, no peace as Decatur police drove by. So it was really powerful, really emotional day to day. Steve Perkins family was actually in attendance and I saw his his wife. She was tearing up during the whole whole service. So um, and actually there was a lot of people that were here who spoke, uh, including the attorney. Uh, Lee Merritt, who was one of the many who spoke, and he says they're calling for an arrest to be made for the officers involved in this shooting and for body cam footage to be released. He says this is the largest crowd he's seen since George, George Floyd. He actually worked um, on a case with George Floyd, so he's seen this. He's, he says this is the largest cloud, crowd he's seen since George Floyd. This whole week, hundreds of people have gathered to honor the life of Steve Perkins. He was shot outside of his home by Decatur police on September 29th and later died at Huntsville Hospital. The Alabama Law Enforcement Agency is currently investigating the case and originally released a statement saying Perkins was armed with a handgun and during the incident, quote, brandished the weapon towards an officer with the Decatur Police Department, causing the officer to fire at Perkins, end quote.
This evening, a large crowd came together in protest of his death, all urging for answers and for body cam footage to be released. We are out here to protest the violent killing done, murder done to Steve Perkins. Um, this is a community that loves Steve. I want to see more progressive policing. I want to see, you know, changes in, in body camera footage uh, and how that is given to the public. I want to see changes in how the DA reacts, to how DAs across the country react to this type of situation. Hundreds of people attended Perkins' celebration of life this morning at Wheeler Chapel Church. This gathering happening after a vigil and multiple protests have taken place this week, each event having the same message. We want accountability. Yes. We want responsibility. Yes. We want change. Yes. The community says they want answers and justice for Perkins. We do not consent to our governing body's ability to hide body cam footage in the, in the name of evidence, and we demand a release. This movement is moving in love and energy from Steve. Y'all killed a man that was an asset to his community, and his energy is exceeding him. The love that the community has for him is exceeding him, so it's bigger than us. The Alabama Law Enforcement Agency is currently investigating this case, and they, along with the Decatur Police Chief, are asking for everyone's patience as Aaliyah's SBI conducts, quote, what must be a very thorough and methodical investigation, end quote. The chief of Decatur Police released a letter this evening touching on a few questions from the public and also acknowledged inaccurate information Decatur Police initially shared from the morning of the incident. Walking back from their original statement, that claimed Perkins, quote, refused to drop his firearm prior to the shooting. Protesters say they will not stop until they get answers and that it's a fight for justice that spans beyond Perkins. It's been years since Crystal Raglan and Brad Pugh, and we still haven't heard anything from the ALEA about them. And, you know, they say, oh, well, ALEA is investigating. Well, you know, cool, you know. They've been investigating Dana Fletcher since, what, 2019, 2018? During protests over the weekend, Decatur Police says they made nine arrests for, quote, disorderly conduct both for obstructing traffic on main roadways and disorderly conduct language in public. But protesters say they will continue gathering and seeking justice for Perkins. First of all, the same, I want you to call a, a news conference. The same way you call one to put it out there, you need to call one to recant it. It's the response from Morgan County NAACP President Rodney Gordon after Decatur Police Chief Todd Pinion admitted to inaccurately providing information on the interaction between Steve Perkins and one of the officers involved in the fatal shooting. Gordon believes that officer... His actions were totally unacceptable. Alabama NAACP State President Bernard Simulton says situations like this is why the NAACP started pushing for body cam footage before it even became popular. Because we know that the cameras do not lie. And so uh, in a situation uh, where there's some questions about, you know, what the victim uh, or the person did, you have a body camera to clarify those uh, questions. Gordon says another thing to note is that this fight for justice will continue and they have no plans of backing down until justice is served. We're not quit. We're not going to stop. We're going to, until they are put in jail, you understand me? Not the, the cam, the body cam. It's all right, but they need to be locked up and not one, but all three of them. It's just, you know, just letting people continue to know that we're not going anywhere until our answers are of justice for Steve are here. A community still looking for answers. We're, we're being obedient right now. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not making no threats, but it's going to have to happen. This week, 
Somebody needs to be arrested this week. Preceded by a bike ride, many gathered outside of Decatur City Hall to honor Steve Perkins, a man who was fatally shot in September. The movement Justice for Steve Perkins began just two short days after the tragedy. So uh, the movement got started uh, after the tragedy happened with Steve when he passed away on Friday morning um, on September 29th. I think it's so important for people to realize that there's so many different things that you can do other than walking down the road holding a sign demanding justice. You know, just to so show their support that we all want the same thing and that's in getting justice for Steve. Recent developments in the case prompted Decatur PD to apologize for misinformation at the beginning of the investigation. Misinformation, Morgan County NAACP president says, just doesn't add up. Three things won't lie, the Bible, the mirror, or the film. So that's what happened. So and then he tried to recant it. The police, they got a motto. When they come to work, they say, everybody go home after the shift. Where everybody went home except the man was at home. The outpouring of support has been overwhelming. It's been fantastic. People are continued to be energized. It has gave, you know, a, a perspective that we're not going anywhere. Just because we had a revival, you know, and we were happy out there singing with that event and then with the vigil and other things like that. And that overwhelming support is felt greatly by the Perkins family. The unity, the peace, just the way the child is showing up in numbers, it is doing my heart well. 54 has confirmed through the family spokesperson, Dr. Brenton Lipscomb, that the family's legal team will be provided that footage tomorrow. It is not known if the footage will be from one or multiple officers involved in the shooting. Here's what Dr. Lipscomb told us earlier tonight. Uh, what we'll be doing is continuing to do the work on the ground um, and along with other grassroots organizations to ensure there is termination of these officers, there is an arrest of these officers, uh, and we do see a prosecution um, as well as we see policy change here in the city of Decatur. However, there is another process to go through before it can be released. Aliyah commented on the process, sharing in part, quote, an individual who is the subject of a law enforcement recording or that individual's personal representative may request disclosure of body camera or dash camera video evidence. That process has not yet been completed in this instance, end quote. Here's what the family's attorney had to share. Unfortunately, we have not seen the video. We came down today, I flew in today for that purpose, uh, but have not been afforded that chance yet. We're told that we need to submit a form, which we'll do immediately, uh, and thereafter there will be a determination as to whether we're going to be allowed to see the video. Our hope is that we will get partnership and be given that opportunity. Well, breaking news out of Decatur, a demonstration in the shooting of Steve Perkins is happening right now where plans are to shut down one of the main bridges. We have our team Sedona Meadows and Kai out there right now, but this is a live picture of that bridge. And as you can see, the cars that are leaving Decatur are blocked, are, are going into the, go, excuse me, going into Decatur are having a trouble having trouble going into Decatur at this moment right now. And so we'll continue to monitor the, this traffic. This is again, Steamboat Bridge with people going into Decatur. It's just, it's, it's empty, which is, it's wild. I, I, I drove over this bridge many times and I have never seen it like this. So, um, like I said, you know, this is all a part of bringing a message to the community, bringing a message to community leaders that they want answers, they want that body cam footage released, they want to know what happened the night that Steve Perkins was shot and killed. As you can see, there are some headlights going on that you can see them in the distance. People are in the streets, they are walking out, they are getting out of their cars, they are honking. I actually heard some sirens um, not too long ago, just a few minutes ago, but as you can see, this is, this is all happening right now on Decatur Bridge all for Steve Perkins. Civil rights activists made mention they would be gathering again Thursday evening, demanding answers as well as body camera footage to be released from the night Steve Perkins was shot and killed by Decatur police. Uh, we're not we're not going to set anything on fire, but we're going to heat it up. These individuals say they are also tired of waiting for the footage to be released. If the video matched the narrative, you would already gave it to us. So they said this demonstration would be something different. We're going to cause a disturbance. 
Oh, a nonviolent disturbance, a legal disturbance. A little after 5.30 Thursday evening, traffic on the bridge going southbound into Decatur came to a complete stop. As you can see, these front cars have their hoods popped up. Some say it was just a car broken down. My car won't stop. My car will not start. Somebody car broke down on the bridge that I know of. I don't know about any protests or whatnot, but someone with a car broke down on the bridge and they needed help. This lasted until around 6 p.m. when Decatur police arrived and cars began immediately moving on the bridge again, with some meeting at the nearby Shell gas station. We want people to know that we're serious about what we're doing and that we're not just going to sit down and let this die. It's going to remain alive because we mean business and we want justice for Steve. Later Thursday evening, they met at City Hall. We read. We read. Protesters say they will not stop until they see justice for Steve Perkins. Four days later, the Decatur Police Department posted on Facebook, saying this incident backed up traffic for several miles and created a hazardous situation for motorists and emergency vehicles, and that numerous individuals who were on the bridge were identified and arrest warrants were sent out, charging them with disorderly conduct. Tuesday afternoon, multiple individuals began turning themselves in, including the president of Morgan County NAACP, Rodney Gordon, who spoke with us after getting out of the Morgan County Jail. What's confusing to me is it took you four days to get me, but it's been 24, day, 24 days and you ain't made no arrest of the murder. All right, so I'm, I'm confused. Until someone is arrested, and, and, and held accountable for this death, for this execution, for this modern day lynching. We're gonna still march. We're gonna still go to jail. City officials held a press conference Thursday afternoon in response to this push for answers by the community. We understand there continues to be questions and uh, concerns about the events of September 29th. During this press conference, the city's attorney, Herman Marks Jr., said there's a process they're following in regards to the internal investigation of the officers who were involved in the shooting. These officers remain on the police department at this time. Marks added that this process is in some ways dictated by state law as far as employee rights. Employees are entitled to due process and equal protection, and there's a process. Mayor Tab Bowling introduced employment attorney Robert Lockwood, who they say is meant to provide outside legal counsel to the city and ensure the internal investigation process is fair. My role is to ensure that the city of Decatur promptly and diligently complies with the obligations imposed by Alabama law for the employment of police officers. My main goal in this process is to ensure that any proceedings are fair to all concerned. Lockwood says upon the completion of DPD's internal investigation, the chief of police will forward any findings to the city of Decatur legal office and to Lockwood's office. Then we will determine what disciplinary action, if any, is appropriate. We recognize the communities and our own desire for a speedy investigation, uh, but this must not sacrifice the integrity uh, of the administrative investigation as well. So uh, we are continuing in that process and um, uh, moving right along. I say churches are coming. Church has been the place where the African American community has congregated for years. One more time. One more. The church is the staple of the community. It is, it is the center of the community. The protests of the 60s came out of the church, and every other protest, primarily since then, have come out of the church. Today at Decatur City Hall, the community got together for a little church. Singing, scripture reading, prayer, 
in the name of Jesus. And a call to justice for Steve Perkins. What's going on here today is we wanted the opportunity as the African-American community to step out and to talk about our narrative, how we view things, because the system and the process that we've endured so far has not been very transparent. And when you don't get any information, you're left to draw your own conclusions. Many protests have taken place since the death of Perkins, and now the center of the community is taking its place. I have must admit, we were a little slow getting on board because our young people are decisive. They're a whole new generation, and they, when they make up their mind to do something, they're, they're very different, and we like it. We like the energy. We like the decisiveness, and they said it's not going to happen on their watch. So we're now catching up to our young people. Pastor Owen shares why movements like this are important to keep going. We should not be at this point 30 days out, and if we don't keep it going, we don't know how much can be, and I hate to say, swept under the rug or covered up, and we are not going to allow anything to be covered up. Chief Todd Pinion issued the update this afternoon, a month and a half after Perkins was shot and killed by Decatur police outside his home after a tow truck driver tried to repossess his truck. Chief Pinion shared that the internal investigation only addresses potential policy violations and is separate from the criminal investigation. Aliyah is currently investigating. Chief Pinion also pointed out the slow speed of the investigation and had a statement directed to the Perkins family. In part, quote, he says, my thoughts remain with the family and friends of Steve Perkins and all who have been impacted by his death, end quote. And in part, quote, I recognize the pace of this process may be frustrating to many who are waiting for answers, end quote. And tonight, civil rights lawyer Cannon Lambert Sr., who was involved in the case, addressed community questions through a public forum that was put on in collaboration with Morgan County's NAACP organization. Many members in the community expressed what happened to Perkins. Wasn't the first time something like this has occurred with Decatur police. It's just been a forceful way that Decatur police have handled themselves over the years. This is about Steve Perkins, but I, I'm, I'm positive that what happened to Jaden feeds right into this case because of that same officer. I'm hearing that this kind of thing that happened to Steve Perkins, this has been going on. It's been a powder keg that's been waiting to explode in this community anyway. We need to organize and start getting these complaints uh, amongst ourselves. All right, after the forum, Lambert spoke with media, news media, about where they are right now with the case and what happens next. We are partnering with the community now. Uh, and we had hoped to do that before, and we are going to actively do that. We are going to partner with this community. We understand that this community has a cry for transparency and for help, and they want to see justice in this situation. And where they're not getting any communication or co cooperation at all from law enforcement and the powers that be, that's where you see us come in. We will make our determination as to when we file suit based on the things that we best believe will help and benefit the Perkins family. There are some things that we are continuing to work out. For Nicholas Perkins, the weekends have always been about family, especially spending time with his brother, Steve Perkins. Steve and I were very close. Um, a lot of times during the week, we didn't get a chance to hang out with each other, but on the weekends, that was our moment. Now, more than six weeks later, his weekends are instead spent honoring the life of his little brother. On the morning of September 29th, I felt like the job of being the protector was taken away from me. I, I couldn't be there for my brother like I wanted to. Steve Perkins was shot and killed outside of his home by Decatur police. And this has his family and the community wanting answers as to what happened. Everybody's upset and hurt about this. And not just our family, the city of Decatur is hurt. The citizens are hurt. Since Perkins' death, the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency is handling the criminal investigation, with Decatur PD doing their own internal investigation. And this week, Decatur Police Chief Todd Pinion shared the internal investigation is now complete emphasizing it addresses potential policy violations only and that he will soon review the report. Per Alabama law, if Chief Pinion finds policy was violated and discipline is warranted, he then turns it over to Mayor Tab Bowling, who then decides what's next. It has been six weeks since we've heard anything for real. And um, we're, we're vastly waiting on that answer. Hopefully it'll come back the right answer. Civil rights attorney Lee Merritt, who is representing the Perkins family, says they're encouraged this internal investigation is complete. 
We know that there's about a 10 day appeals process for whatever decision the chief made. We're anxious to see what his conclusion was. And now the family's legal team is partnering with the community. This weekend being an example of that through a unity cookout. The people of Decatur aren't having enough conversations. And what better way to have a conversation than to share a meal with somebody that you don't know and get to know them. I think with more conversations and understanding, the world will be a lot better place. I just want the community to be able to come together and this should have happened a long time ago and it sucks that it had to happen this way. I've not seen a small community, a relatively non-major city, come together on a consistent basis this way probably since George Floyd. Nicholas Perkins says seeing everyone come together to honor his brother feels nostalgic and a reminder of the man he was. My favorite memory of my brother is when um, his child Avani was born and to see him have that moment and to take it in and embrace fatherhood. It was a very proud moment for me. At that point, he became, <clears throat> he became the man that everybody wanted him to be. And although he can't physically spend his weekends with Steve anymore, he'll always be his brother's protector. My brother's death will not be in vain. I will go to my grave making sure that it won't. Merritt says on behalf of the Steve Perkins family, they will soon be filing a federal civil rights lawsuit. After a full week of no answers, Chief Todd Pinion has released his review of the internal investigation of the Steve Perkins case that was completed last week. In his statement, Pinion says in part, quote, he found reason to believe that policies were violated and the final report and findings were sent to the legal department, end quote. Pinion also mentions the many reports of Perkins' car still being repossessed after Perkins was shot and laying on the ground. He says in part, quote, while no policy exists for every potential situation a police department may encounter, I fully understand why the officer's decision to allow this to occur caused additionally hurt additional hurt to Mr. Perkins' family, end quote. Now, Pinion said he met with the officers involved yesterday before completing the investigation. He also says the officer who fired his weapon will remain on paid administrative leave, while the other officers involved will remain on administrative assignment as the case is now in Mayor Tab Bowling's hands. Today, Decatur Mayor Tab Bowling speaks for the first time after Chief Todd Pinion released his review of the internal investigation of Steve Perkins. Pinion did say policies were violated the night Perkins was shot and killed by Decatur police. The mayor sharing he anticipates recommending discipline after getting the determinations and formal statement of the formal charges on Wednesday. Hearings on any proposed discipline is expected for December 1st, 4th rather, December 4th. Here's a listen to the mayor. In any hearings, I will hear the facts of the case and decide if discipline is warranted and to what extent. Under Alabama law, any decision can be appealed to the personnel board if any officer is disciplined. <coughs> the Decatur, or that would be any employee. The Decatur Police Department has committed and I have committed to make these findings, uh, these uh, hearings public. Well, following the mayor's statements, members of the community shared their remarks with one woman providing a reminder of why so many people are speaking in the first place. I basically don't have any questions for you, but I do have a statement. That was intentional. That was a six second that I put on to remind you as you're going through your decisions, all of you and your recommendations. That, that was the time that Steve had to respond to what he didn't know was outside of his house. And despite the council's statements today, community members still weren't pleased with how city leaders have communicated their investigation to the public. Going through this tragedy taught this community a huge and very important lesson. You all don't have much idea of what you're doing when it comes to the community and communicating. And community activists pledge to keep marching and speaking until the officers involved face consequences in the death of Steve Perkin.